It's time for Pastor Bob's Coffee Break, coming up next. Mug of the Month, T-shirt of the Month, poster of the Month, my personal pronoun, his. And uh, if you haven't seen this T-shirt, it's the coolest one. <laughs> there it is in T-shirt form, my personal pronoun. Yeah. And I have the most exciting news for you. The tea is out. Our Intensa Tea line, this is the first one. It's called Crimson Brew. And it is so good, so good. And you can find that and our coffee and all of our stuff. We are metal, we are family .com. Dear Pastor Bob, you're a good example of what is wrong with the church today. There we go. You are very judgmental and condemning. You preach love, yet you believe that people are going to hell for being transgender. Where is your love and compassion? You're a hypocrite. And I actually bleeped out the words that weren't appropriate because there were quite a few. Uh, you know, it's interesting how I get in trouble for things that I've never said and wouldn't say and don't believe. This is one of those. And I'm sorry if you assumed that I'm not in favor of people transgendering, that I'm assuming they're going to hell and that I am uh, not being loving. You know, folks, uh, nobody is more out of the box than me. And I mean that. I mean, I... I had tattoos when they weren't popular. I had long hair when it wasn't popular. I promoted metal when it wasn't popular. I have been outside of the box most of my life. But I've been, um, how should I say, I've stood on the word of God the whole time. And I continue to. And sometimes that brings us to situations like this that may be unpopular for some people. I believe in being outside of the box. I don't want to be a cookie cutter of anybody else. I love being unique. I love being who I am. And I love being part of this metal community. But folks, there are some things that make us happy and some things that don't. And all of this information from people that are committing suicide, people that are suicidal, uh, people that have gone through the whole chan transgender change and found out that it didn't solve what they were hoping to solve. Um, and so many people that are regretting it these days. I played a video of one of those guys in my last podcast. There's a reason for that. And I established the, the biblical principle of that the last, uh, well, last week when we talked about the transgender train, the trans train, and uh, what's wrong with that, and what does the Bible have to say? I'm not going to repeat that in this one, but I do want to talk about this. You know, it is a mindset that, that Christians believe that, that whatever they're against, they believe those people are going to hell. And there are Christians that feel that way. You know, it's kind of a funny little thing. You know, when somebody does something wrong, you say, oh, you're going to hell. And I've done that. But, you know, we ought to say, oh, you're going to heaven. <laughs> if they're a Christian, they are. And is it possible for a transgender person to be a Christian? Absolutely. I've met several. You say, well, that's a contradiction in terms. Well, I'm a contradiction in terms, and so are you. No one is perfect. No one is righteous on their own. Everybody makes mistakes. And there are people that have made the transgender decision and transed already who realize they've made a big mistake and they're trying to live with it, trying to be okay with it, trying to survive. 
Can I just say they need the Lord more than ever? I get that. And I think we're about to have a whole lot of them in our society who really regret what they've done and are angry with the people who promoted it. Yeah. So once again, we and I, I'm repeating this almost every time I know, but there is some brainwashing going on. And people in our society today really want us to stretch the limit on our taboos, things that we used to think were taboo, now all of a sudden they're okay. And then number two, to constantly repeat the incorrect narrative. If I say something enough times, people begin to believe it. You see that happening all the time. And then when all that happens, they take over mentally, mental power, take over your mind, and they start to control you and control you with finances, control you with all kinds of things. And at the end of the day, it's a cash cow. At the end of the day, there are people making a lot of money on this whole thing. Shame on them. Well, I've talked about transgenderism, but I want to talk about this whole idea today that, you know, that we automatically assume people are going to hell when they do something like this. Very sad that we feel that way. And I want to take you to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And this is such an important scripture. And once again, when we lay out our lives, we build on the word of God. It's right here, folks. And how do I feel about the people who are transitioning? I mourn for them. I don't feel so much judgmental. Uh, uh, thoughts about them, but I mourn what they're doing because I know it's going to sting. I know that they're likely to regret it. And I know that the very thing that they're trying to to correct, to feel good about, it isn't going to do that. Romans 5, eight, But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we are still sinners... Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One, died for us. He didn't wait until we cleaned up our act and said, okay, I'll save you, but you got to get better first. What he did say was, they're not getting any better. <laughs> they're not getting any better. They're not able to correct. They're not able to discipline themselves. And if we were, folks, if we had any kind of righteousness on our own, Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross. What he did say was, they're a hopeless case. They need me. And his blood shed on the cross covered our sins. He gave us his righteousness because ours, he said, was filthy rags. He gave us his Holy Spirit to guide us because our own inner guidance kept taking us in the wrong places. And folks, we make mistakes. You and I both do. People that are transgendering, I believe, do. And yet, in the middle of all of that, Christ died for us, loves us, saved us. And folks, whenever you begin to hate a people group, you know, and I know people that hate transgender people, hate the homosexual um, movement, uh, uh, people specifically around them, you know, they're all going to hell. They can't go to heaven. And, and they begin to judge accordingly. And yet their own sins, yeah. The Bible says, you know, you kind of need to take out that plank in your own eye before you try to remove that splinter in somebody else's. Yeah. Folks, I am so thankful that God loves us that when he sees somebody that's doing something wrong, something that isn't good for them, he mourns it. And if you have a heart for people, and if you have the Holy Spirit inside, you begin to mourn it too. You feel badly for them, not judgmental. They didn't do anything wrong to you. And you shouldn't anyway. But what you feel is mourning. What you feel is compassion. 
what you feel is, you know, they need Jesus, just like I do, to get through. And folks, if we could come together, no matter what, it used to be that hair separated, people been, you know, straight Christian friends. <laughs> well, straight these, these days means, you know, non-homosexual. I didn't mean that kind of thing. I mean, straight as like people who, you know, wear the suit and tie and they look a little different. It If I don't have those people in my people group, if I don't have people who are different than me, in that group of people that I love and cherish and embrace as the family of God, then I've missed the mark on the whole thing. I love that we've gone to the University of Diversity, seriously, that there are so many different kinds of people in the body of Christ. And we talk about heavy metal because that's what I worked with for all these years. I love the, the metal community, but I have a whole lot of friends outside of that community that I dearly love. People that are more normal than me <laughs> and we're best friends. And I love that part because you see the thing that unites us is Jesus. What about transgender people? You know, Christ looked beyond our sin. He looked beyond our crisis. He looked beyond those differences that we had, and he died for us, for those people. And if you're one of them, transgender people, he died for you too, just like he did for me. He loves you as much as he loves me, and his compassion will not fail you. He is compassionate towards you no matter what you're going through. That's the part I love about being a Christian. So for this person that I ass that assumed that I was uh, being very judgmental and saying this person was going to hell, never said that and I don't believe that. And you probably haven't watched the podcast very much because you'd know that I would never say that. And uh, am I a hypocrite? Absolutely. Yes, I am because sometimes I say one thing and I do something else. Sometimes I tell you that this particular thing is a sin and then I commit it myself. Yeah. Paul said, you know, the things that I don't want to do, I do. The things that I want to do, I don't do. He said, what a wretched man I am. Who will save me from this? Jesus Christ. And he continues to, <laughs> because we are hypocrites. We don't do it right. We're not perfect. Well, folks, I hope that helps. I hope your compassion uh, expands. And let's begin to mourn what's happening with people and love them because I think we have a whole generation of people who really need our compassion and unconditional love. Don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.